Okay, uh, hello, thanks for coming. And uh, we would like to start with one important question. Who likes to look for a needle in a haystack? Please raise your hands. Oh, <laughs> okay, only a few of uh, you, so that's good, because we won't supply any magnets. And uh, instead of showing you uh, how to look for a needle in a haystack, we will show you how to have it already on a plate in the way that you will never have to think, oh no, these aren't the locks I was looking for. So, my name is Alicia, uh, I work for Intel, and since uh, Liberty I've been uh, focused on Cola project, where I am also a core reviewer. We have a great community and it's a pleasure to be a part of it, and also it's a pleasure to show this presentation with these two great guys, uh, with whom I was working on logging during Mitaka cycle. So, Eric and Michal. So, hi, I'm, I'm Eric. I work for Mirantis as a, as a software developer. So, I'm here to talk about Cola and logging, uh, which is a project uh, I contributed to um, in the past few months. And my name is Michal, I work for Intel, and I'm also a proud member of Cola Core community, Cola Core reviewers, and uh, yes, let's talk about Cola then. So, uh, this is a quick agenda, what we're gonna uh, walk through. First, um, we're gonna uh, make short introduction to Cola, for, for whoever, may, you may not know what is it about, so let's talk about it. How did we? How do you, in general, deal with logs in Docker's? Then what we did to make it work with our syslog, and what we and why we remove it later. Uh, later, um, and how we implemented central logging service with Kibana and uh, and Elasticsearch, Elk or Ek. I will leave it for later. And we'll also have a short live demo for you of what we of a running running central central logging. So let's let's go ahead and talk about Cola. So in short, Cola uh, is a deployment of OpenStack in a, using Docker. Two major parts of it right now is uh, Docker containers and Docker files which we built. We built for uh, different distros. We built a. Uh, we don't build full Big Ten, but we build, we build uh, quite a big chunk of it. And also we supply you with uh, some Ansible playbooks to easily, quickly deploy production-ready OpenStack with uh, HA, with Ceph, with anything pretty much you want, using our docking containers. So, uh, as I said, Cola consists currently of Docker containers, Docker files, Deployment tools, which is right now Ansible is the main one, but also we had some uh, we had some prototype of uh, Mesos using uh, Docker, using our containers, also Kubernetes using our, our containers, which you probably seen on the demo on the one of the keynotes, and uh, Cola Glue is a, a repository in a, in a Docker Hub. Uh, you, if you don't want to build your own containers, you can just download it from Docker Hub and run whatever we are running. We tag, Docker, we tag those containers every release, so you will be up to date. And uh, you can customize anything pretty much. Uh, up to the line of config per, um, well, up to a line of config per uh, host. So logging in containers. So this is tricky, tricky thing because, as you probably know, containers are separate anything, uh, separ are separated, uh, pretty, mu pretty much operating systems. So getting getting logs out of it is a kind of tricky, tricky thing. You don't want to supply, you don't want to put uh, additional services in the same container, which makes things harder because when, when you service logs. Uh, when your service uh, make a log may, logs to something, you would need a service to other service, different one, to follow to convey this log to the central logging service and so on and so forth. And in containers, this is anti-pattern to run more than one service, so we had to deal with it. So how Docker logs? It's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty elegant uh, solution. 
so Docker itself will capture the, the standard error and standard output out of the service, which has speed one, which is the main service per container. And it, then it can use several of its of, uh, drivers to, uh, to, to move the, to, to, I mean, to do with whatever you want to do with the lock. JSON one is a uh, simplest one, it's uh, default and it just capture uh, and just save it on a file. Syslog is well, syslog. You also have uh, journal D, Gulf, Fluentd, and uh, you can you can uh, I mean you can uh, see, you customize it by, by by container and to see which container runs which uh, which the logging environment you can run Docker inspect. So docker logs command is a very easy way to access the standard output and, uh, of, the, of the pit. You just docker, docker logs and uh, name of the container, ID of the container. So that's easy. That's an easy way. However, it works only for JSON and uh, syslog drivers. So our syslog, it was a hacky way that we dealt with logs in Liberty. Uh, it was hacky. We pretty much, so late on the Liberty, we, we, mm, we needed to supply a nice operational way to manage logs. So the way our syslog work, uh, works is it, it creates a special device called devlog, uh, which services that are going to log into our syslog, writes into the special device, becomes a stream and then you then then the Ersys log daemon gets the logs and can parse it, ma manage it, and so forth and so forth. However, it wasn't meant to be a container service because it requires you to have a um, devlog. We had to somehow provide the same devlog in multiple containers, and providing a slash dev things are not easy and. Actually, are, are short of imp nothing short of impossible uh, with the newer Docker because Docker became. Uh, I mean, Docker started to use the very same the, the, the few of the dev, uh, dev uh, uh, files, and we couldn't simply uh, share the dev. So the other thing is, we the syslog wasn't also meant for multi-line logs, and Python tracebacks are multi-line logs, which basically means it's ugly, it's, and you don't want ugly logs. Uh, we, at some point, we didn't even have tracebacks. That was a bug which we fixed, but uh, even if once we get it going, it still was ugly, and it's, uh, I mean, whoever wa ran this RSYS log uh, with, the, with uh, Python code, it's possible, it's not, it's not pretty. So bottom line, we totally remove it uh, from Liberty and uh, from Liberty and Metaca because and uh, right now we are doing something a bit different. And okay, so central logging service, uh, is it worth introducing it? What are advantages of the solution? So let me explain it by example. Uh, have you ever been to Washington Art Museum and have seen this exhibition? Oh, okay, I was there and I really like it, but honestly, I believe that it's not a very good solution for debugging application. Uh, and without central logging service, we may feel like this, like standing in front of the wall full of screens, and we are not sure where we should look at first. And wouldn't it be better if we have only one single interface with access to everything? And with central logging service, it is possible. Another important thing, uh, I'm sure that most of us have ever felt like that uh, during debugging applications uh, when we had to scroll many screens in order to find the answer. And uh, imagine that we can add a search bar or a visualization panel to this book full of logs and get answer to everything much faster. And once again, with central logging service, we can do it very fast. We have filtering options and different visual representations of our data. So that is why we decided to introduce central logging service in Cola as a new Mitaka feature. 
And here is our architecture. It uh, consists of three components, Heka, Elasticsearch, and Kibana. So uh, all of them uh, run in Docker containers. And we have Heka on every node. Uh, it collects data from services, which are logging to files. Then data is fed to Elasticsearch, uh, which is also a backend for Kibana. Uh, and Kibana uh, is designed to interact with indices stored in Elasticsearch, and it allows to uh, visualize data, search data, and interact with them. And we also support uh, Elasticsearch cluster mode. And to give you a better overview of uh, each component, we'll describe uh, them briefly. So, yeah. so we're, we're now going to talk about, um, about Heka um, into more detail. So a uh, quick introduction to Heka. So what is Heka? It's a stream uh, processing software. It's open source, and it was developed by, by Mozilla, and it's written in, in Go. So as a stream processing software, Heka acquires the data, it processes it, and then it sends it to some external system, like a storage, storage system, for example. In our case, this is Elasticsearch. So as Alicia said, Heka is run on every cluster node, so this is a very important component. It, it's run everywhere for collecting logs and sending them to Elasticsearch. So was why Heka created uh, in the first place. So Heka actually is a unified uh, data processing system, uh, which means it can, um, it can collect and, and process any type of data. Uh, in our case, it can be logs, it can be metrics, it can be anything. In the case of Cola and the work we're talking about uh, today, uh, we use it to collect logs. But in the future, we may use it to collect something else, metrics, for example. So this is the Heka pipeline. So, so Heka works actually as a data pipeline uh, with plugins at each stage of the pipeline. So there are actually five types of plugins, uh, inputs, splitters, decoders, filters, and outputs. And each plays a role uh, in the pipeline. So ECA comes with uh, built-in plugins. Uh, they are written in Go. And you can actually write your own custom plugins in Lua. So it's very flexible from that point, that point of view. Uh, so every, uh, every Lua plugin is actually a sandbox. And it's limited. Uh, in terms of CPU and memory that it, ca it can consume. And if it, if it consumes too much memory, then Heka will, will kill the, the plugin. So some of the Heka highlights uh, that I, I'd like to, to mention. Uh, so Heka is very lightweight. Uh, uh, so that makes it possible to run it on every cluster node. And it's also very, very flexible. I will go back to this in, in a bit. So when we designed uh, this central logging uh, solution for Cola, uh, obviously the question of using Logstash or Eka uh, was raised. And we, uh, we actually decided to go with Eka. Uh, so we chose Eka. And the main reason was uh, we wanted to build a distributed system and we did not want to have a JVM running on each node. Uh, we also conducted a number of experiments, a number of performance tests, and Eka was much faster and lightweight than, than Logstash. And as, as I said already, Eka is very, very flexible. We can define plugins uh, as code, which makes it yeah, very, very flexible for us. So we decided to, uh, to use Eka. So our stack is not ELK, but EHK. So now I'm going to talk briefly about uh, Elasticsearch. 
so Elasticsearch is an open source product. Uh, it's actually basically highly scalable full text search engine. Uh, so it's very well known. It's uh, used by many applications, many companies, and it's written in, in Java. So the main highlights of Elasticsearch for, for us uh, is that it's highly scalable. Uh, what does that mean? It means that you can increase your cluster capacity just by adding nodes. And adding, adding nodes to the cluster is, is very easy. Uh, it's highly available. Uh, because the data is replicated across the cluster. Uh, it's a full text search engine, uh, which is based on the Apache Lucin library, uh, which is a good library. It's been, it's been there for a long time. Uh, it's also documented, document oriented, and every action that you can perform, uh, you do that through a RESTful API, uh, which is a which uses uh, JSON over HTTP. So now Alicia is going to talk about Kibana. Yeah, so uh, the last component is Kibana, and it is also an uh, open source product from Elastic Group. Uh, in the latest, or in the fourth uh, version, it comes with a Node.js app that sits uh, between Elasticsearch backend and uh, Kibana UI. And it was designed to work with Elasticsearch, so it has a built-in proxy to it. Uh, and uh, how it can interact with uh, Elasticsearch indices. So there is a wide range of uh, choices from uh, search bars, uh, which allow us to uh, use different fields or just uh, look for entire message. Uh, we, uh, logs can be also filtered by different time ranges, uh, both absolute and relative. And there is also a, wi a wide range of different charts. There are uh, bar charts or pie charts. And uh, for example, there is also a data histogram, which uh, by default uh, shows count of logs versus uh, time. Uh, and now, we'll show you some uh, basic examples. So in the left, we can see the data histogram. Uh, and then two other uh, charts are top 10 uh, sources, so top 10 services that uh, are logging to, uh, to, our, to our service. And uh, the last one is top 10 hosts. Here we can also see a bar chart divided by severity levels, so we can at once see whether something is wrong with our application, what is uh, its state. And uh, at the bottom, there is a search panel uh, when we can specify different fields uh, which we would like to examine. So uh, we have all our logs stored in one place, but we don't want to uh, give access to them to unauthorized users. So that is why we were thinking about uh, adding authentication to Kibana. Uh, first uh, solution that uh, we were considering was Shield. It is also a product from Elastic Group. And uh, in latest version, it provides uh, security for the whole stack, so also for Elasticsearch. And it uh, has a, a login uh, UI for Kibana, but uh, unfortunately, it requires, uh, requires a license, so uh, we couldn't have uh, used it. Uh, the next uh, idea was to use Nginx, but uh, it required introducing new component, and we have uh, already implemented uh, HA proxy in Cola, so we decided to use it to add Kibana authentication based on simple access control list. And also recently, uh, TL TLS for Kibana uh, has uh, been also added to, to Cola. So uh, now you know how it works. You know all the advantages. And I'm sure that you are thinking that you'll have to spend hours or on uh, configuring, on installing the solution. And we have another great surprise for you. It is as easy as uh, three steps. So in a comparison to a standard uh, Cola procedure, 
you have to build uh, three more images, which is Heka, Elasticsearch, and Kibana. You have to change one flag in configuration, which is enable central logging. You have to uh, put through there. And then you can deploy Cola with one command. So you have the whole open stack with central logging service running. And uh, if you want to uh, get some details about how to deploy Cola or uh, any other things, uh, you can watch a webinar presented by our PTL at the link provided below, and we'll also provide this link at the end of the presentation. Okay, so now we are going to show you a quick demo. Maybe I can start with it. So, um, so this is the Kibana uh, UI, the Kibana interface that we use. So when you when you open Kibana in your browser, uh, that's what you that's what you get. So it's already connected to Elasticsearch, so it, it fetches uh, the logs from the Elasticsearch index, and this is, so this is what you get. So you, you get a graph here, which is histogram, so it's the count of logs uh, over the time, uh, very basic, and you also get a, a table uh, here um, with the, with the actual, actual logs. So here it's the logs over the last uh, uh, 15 minutes, so I can I can change this and 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 get the logs over the last seven days. So if I do that, uh, a query will be made is made to Elasticsearch, and then we, we get all the logs for for that uh, period of time. So now I can go ahead and I, I can customize uh, this t this table uh, because here it has only two columns, uh, very basic. So I can go ahead and customize this, uh, add the host name, uh, as, add the program name that generated the log, uh, the severity, and maybe the, the entire, entire payload of the logs. So one of the advantages of this solution is that you can very quickly uh, search for specific logs. Uh, so, for example, I can. So, I have a search bar here. Uh, I can select. Uh, let's let's say I want to to know everything. I want to see if I have errors. So, I, I, I put error here. It's a full text search, and I will get all the logs that include error in any field, anywhere. So, this is very yeah. That that's full text search, basically. So, this can be very very convenient if you don't know. Uh, where uh, this error string is, and you want just you want to get everything that includes error. The other thing I can do is I can be mo very more specific, and I can say that I want to um, I want to get all the neutron logs uh, whose severity is error, which can be which can be useful, obviously. So now I have a nice search. Uh, I like this one. I know I'm going to reuse it uh, in the future. So what I can do, I can save it. So I have this here. I can save it. Neutron. Yeah, let's call it Newton. And save. Now it's saved in Elasticsearch, actually, because uh, we, uh, the, saving, it, the saving of uh, the Kibana uh, metadata goes into Elasticsearch as well. So I can go back uh, a few days later and I can re reopen this. So I can go here and reopen my, my search. So, so as you see uh, at the top, uh, this is the Discover panel of Kibana. Uh, where you get this kind of table uh, with all the logs and the searching uh, capability. And now Alicia is going to show you how to create actual visualizations, analytics uh, based on, on the data. Okay, so uh, here is a visualization uh, tab. 
we can choose it and we can uh, say that there is a wide range of different uh, different uh, visualizations so we will choose for example bar chart and i'm going to show you how to create a bar chart for different severity levels so uh, here at uh, y axis we have account as uh, X axis, we'll choose terms and then specific field, so severity label. We can increase the size. And now it looks like that. So we have the same color for all severity uh, levels. And if you would like to uh, split it, we choose split bars option. We choose the same field. And now it will look like this. So we'll have different colors for each severity level. And the same as with search, uh, that was explained by Eric, we can save our visual visualization Let's call it severity bars. And in future, we can just come here and open it. OK, so we have our search. We have our visualization. So what we could do next? We can create a, a dashboard. So we choose, we go to the dashboard tab and we choose Add Visualization option. And here we can get uh, searches saved by Eric. Here is Neutron. And we can see that it appears here. And we can add also visualizations, so severity bars. And we can create a custom dashboard and add different uh, visualizations, different searches to it. Uh, we can also save this dashboard, like here. I will call it test dashboard. Save. And then we can access it in the future by opening it. And now we are going to show you uh, our custom Cola dashboard. It's here. We prepared it uh, earlier. So as you can see, we have different charts here. And we have also a search panel here. And if we prepare our uh, dashboard and our uh, searches, our visualizations, we can go to Settings tab, to Objects, and we can export it to a JSON format in order to save it or share with somebody. So we just export everything. And it is uh, saved as a JSON, as we can see, like here. OK. Yeah, just a quick note about the dashboard. So currently, we don't have any, maybe we mentioned this after, but currently in Cola, there is no default dashboard. So what you so when you install the solution, uh, what you will, will get is is this Kibana, and you have to create your own dashboard. But in the future, our plan is to to create a default dashboard. So when you install the solution, you you will get a dashboard. If you're happy with it, uh, with a, that kind of graphs and charts. If you're happy with it, you can use it. Otherwise, you can customize it or change it completely. I think that's the, that's the end of our presentation. Thank you for your attention. And I think we're ready to take questions. We, yeah, we have some time. Thank you. Hi, uh, great presentation, by the way. Thanks. Uh, looks amazing. A few questions I had were, uh, can it be non-containerized? As in, can I deploy this? without Kola, or uh, have you tried that, or have you been focusing solely on Kola? Because uh, for something, 
where Kuala hasn't been implemented, like I come from the Solaris side of things, and we have a Solaris implementation of OpenStack. So if I want to quickly implement this EHK, and I want centralized logging, how do I do it? So um, we didn't test it. I don't see, I should, it shouldn't be an issue, apart from the, uh, from the thing that when you use our Ansible deployment, it will all be configured to work together. So that part you'll need to do manually. You probably need to deploy Heka. You probably could deploy Heka with containers. You would need to do some wiring around configuration. And that's pretty much it. From, I, I, I would think that's pretty much it. Uh, it will require manual labor, but you still should be able to do it. OK. Um, the other question is, let's say I've <coughs> run a search. Uh, which says, uh, give me all error on NOAA. And, and I'm debugging a specific problem where I'm trying to create a VM or attach a volume and something's going wrong. And I have no clue where to look at because it could be pretty much anywhere. Or let's say I'm creating a VM, right? It could be failing anywhere. And I want centralized logging. And I want a very, very fine granular relative time where it said last 15 minutes. You said, uh, search me, give me all logs from the last 15 minutes. Can I narrow it down to the last five minutes? And will it freeze? And, and I, want, I don't want additional logging, clogging up my search results. Can I say, I'm going to run this search and freeze the set of logs that you have right now, and don't give me incoming logs? Because I may, maybe I've, I've turned debug on, on NOAA Compute or Neutron, and there could be tons of logs, right? And it could just be writing stuff, and my search again gets cluttered. So can I can I like freeze a set of logs and search within that? So uh, yes, in Elastic you can do whatever you want. You can set I want from this date, this hour to this day, this hour. Mm -hmm. You can say last two minutes, last fifty seconds, last fifteen seconds, whatever you want. And it's pretty. So the language uh, for the search in, in Elastic. Uh, this is the demo that Eric showed. Just a, just a, just a scratch of it. It's pretty pretty powerful. It's pre, it's well documented, so you can go all sorts of crazy stuff with this. Great. Once again, thanks, guys. Sometimes the most interesting logs are right before a, like a hard power loss or a network con connectivity loss. And the interesting logs are in the disk cache and don't wind up getting written to disk before the node just spirals out of control. What, uh, what do you do to deal with that kind of situation? So uh, default, by default, it always got locked on the node. I mean, every log is locked on the node to the file at first. So even if you lose the connectivity and then the, the node itself gets out of the network, the file, log files will be there. So you may not have this in your central logging, but we do have normal file logging logs on the node as well, and they will stay there. Yeah, and I will add to that. And the system is also quite robust, uh, because if you lose the connectivity and then the connectivity comes back, Heka will be able to read the logs again, the logs that have, have not been pushed to Elasticsearch yet, so it will recover everything, and you, you, you should not lose logs, basically. And it's the same if, you, if the connectivity between Heka and Elasticsearch uh, goes down. Uh, the logs will accumulate in, into files on, on every node, and then when the connection is, is, goes back, is back up, everything will, be, will synchronize, and you will get your logs. I guess the one problem that I haven't been able to find a way around is if the logs are in the disk cache and they haven't been written to the disk when the problem occurs, a kernel crash or a hard power loss. Um, so it hasn't been sent over the network. It hasn't been written to disk. It's in a disk cache. I mean, how much can you do about that? I haven't found any kind of real solution. And that's often when the logs are most interesting, you know, right before you have a hard kernel crash or something like that. So I... Correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but there's, there's little we can do actually about that. We don't go that low level. Yeah, we, I was going to say the same. Because even, even when Eka is processing the logs, at that time, the logs are in, 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 in the memory. So if, if your computer crashes at, at that time, then you will, you will lose the logs, yeah. 
So that kind of things can, may happen. Yeah. Um, do you use the standard log format in the OpenStack services, or have you tried the JSON formats? No, no, we use the standard. And, and you pass those with Hacker? Yeah. OK, and exactly. how, how does the, uh, the traceback passing work? Is, is that reliable? Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally reliable. It works as you expect it to work. Uh, so we, we have a, um, an Hacker decoder, uh, which is specific to OpenStack, and, and it, it can deal with uh, tracebacks. So when it, when it, when it sees uh, the beginning of tracebacks, of a traceback, uh, you say, oh, it's a traceback. Now I'm going to read more lines and accumulate this until I, I see the, the end of the traceback. And this is just one message. Cool. Uh, congratulations, guys. Really good presentation. Um, my name is Neil. I work at Cloud Engineering at Box. And I was wondering if, I think you touched upon it a little bit, but if you could uh, extend um, this idea to getting metrics uh, logging from your various components as well as maybe even the, the VMs themselves into the same pipeline uh, as you're doing with log aggregation? Can you also be extending this for metrics aggregation? So uh, we have this in plans. Not, par no, not precisely what you described it, because we don't want our logs to be stored in Elasticsearch, uh, not logs, but uh, metrics to be stored in Elasticsearch because there are better ways to do deal with metrics. This is different kind of data. Heka will make a handy in it, probably will, and uh, we, prob we will create a new set of uh, tool tooling to deal with metrics and monitoring data, like, I don't know, CollectD or Snap or yeah. something like that. And uh, that's, one of the that's one of the parts we want to deal with in this cycle. So if any, any one of you would like to help, we will accept it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sure, and I think we up. have a summit session about this. Right? Yes, we we, we, should, we we I think we do. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So I think you mentioned this as an as a way to actually gather infrastructure logs. Any thoughts into how to actually extend this to user application logs? Uh, we we have no such plan for now. Okay. So. So maybe we could um, integrate with a project like Monasca in the future, but right now it's only about the OpenStack services logs and the infrastructure logs, yeah. Hi, uh, when you um, um, look at uh, Logstash and also at Heka um, with the performance, um, um, did you also uh, test uh, Logstash with uh, file build um, as a lightweight log shipper? Yeah, we thought about it, uh, but even if you use lightweight agents, uh, you need to have Logstash uh, centralized somewhere. And we, we really wanted to have a, a distributed and scalable architecture, so we have Heka everywhere on every node, and it Heka directly pushing to Elasticsearch, which we know scales. So. Okay, uh, is uh, the filtering in Heka um, as powerful um, and also as easy to use as in uh, Logstash? Well, it's you. You have to know Lua, so you have to know how to to develop plugins in in Lua if you want it to be very flexible and, and do exactly what you, what you need. Um, for uh, basic uh, splitting up log file, log lines uh, from um, yeah, OpenStack log format, um, is that an, um, a filtering um, which is still present or, or do you also have to write Lua scripts uh, for that simple things? So as I said, Heka comes with uh, built-in plugins. Uh, there are many plugins. Uh, so, for example, you have splitters. Uh, you have very basic splitters that will split your log stream uh, with uh, end of line uh, characters. So, you, you have many such plugins. Uh, but in our case, to be able to deal with uh, tracebacks, we had to write our own decoder. Okay, thanks very much.
Any other questions? All right. Thank so you I very much. I think we can close this. Yeah. Thank you very much again. Yeah.